can we talk about concrete pool shells? And I'm talking about like the structural stuff, not the finishing details like plaster and tile. And I want to talk about this because I have a consulting service through my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com. If you, if you want to find it, you can just type in Ask Swimming Pool Steve and you'll find the page where you can consult with me about swimming pool stuff. I had a customer who was doing this and they have a new pool, brand new pool. It's just been built. They just filled it with water and there's a big problem. So they've contacted me. And learning the details, I am just so disheartened for these people. Like, let me tell you, this pool is not like an above ground pool that costs like $500. It's just picture in your mind, like something from a magazine, a beautiful in ground concrete swimming pool. It looks fantastic. And one side is like on grade, which means you'd walk out from your house and like right on the pool deck, it's all the same level. The other side of the pool has like a exposed wall that's like, I don't know, four or five feet tall, something like that. And so I would presume that this property is sloped in the, the pool is built into the slope because one wall of the pool is exposed. And that's uncommon. Most of the time with concrete swimming pools, the walls are entirely exposed. You never see the backsides of the walls of concrete pools. Rarely. Well, I mean, I've seen lots of them because I dig them up for a living. And here's the thing. They all look the same. They're a disaster. There's just efflorescent staining everywhere because concrete pools by and large leak water. That's just how they're designed or they're not designed to be that way, but that's just a function of concrete in and of itself being a porous material. And it's not until recently, into the most like recent decade or two, that we actually have waterproofing systems that are being widely used in the construction of concrete swimming pools, as they should be. I usually tell this to people. If you're going to build a concrete pool in your house and just bury it entirely in the ground, you'd never notice that it leaks water. Because it doesn't like actively run water. There's like... Water that which leaches out, like the concrete is a sponge, it absorbs the water. So it's not running, but it is absorbing the water. And then that means the soil around the pool will also leach water from the shell itself. And so, you know, the, the problem is, you're dealing with a porous substance to begin with, when it's thick enough, when it's strong enough, it's so highly water resistant, that you can make a swimming pool out of. But you know what you need? You need engineering level specifications to do something like that because this pool shell in particular, let's talk about the details. First of all, the pool shell is six inches thick. To some of you, that might mean nothing. To some of you, you might agree with that and say, yep, that's how we do it around here. To me, this is crazy. Okay, can we first of all agree that if there's one area of your swimming pool you do not want to underbuild, it's the pool shell right? Are we all in agreement so far? Great. So in the areas which I've built concrete pools, we require engineering. It's not an optional thing which you can choose to do. You must have engineering approval, site inspection, soil reports, all of the stuff, stamped plans that you're building, and then inspections that prove that you're following the plans. Not everywhere works like that. In fact, there is a lot, a lot of concrete pools get built with zero engineering. And what does that mean? That just means that the in-house company that you're dealing with, the company that you're dealing with has an in-house process that they've developed presumably over a period of time. And that's just the way they do things. If you were to hire an engineer to review the specifications, they would probably not agree with what's happening here. And even if they would, even if you could get an engineer to stamp and say, this is the minimum passable thickness for this concrete pool shell. How much would it be to make it thicker, make it stronger? You know, like there's, there's limitations and things you have to consider here. Like at eight inches thick of concrete, you would have a rebar grid, which is approximately in the middle. So four inches of encapsulation on both sides. But if we want to go thicker than eight inches, you can't just have five inches or six inches on both sides. There's limitations. There's going to be slough where the, you shoot the concrete onto the wall and it just falls off. And there's also going to be the engineering load specifications that that steel would be inadequate. And if you were to go thicker than eight inches, you would then have two mats of, of steel spaced four inches apart instead of one right in the middle. All of these are details. The bottom line being this pool shell was built without an, any engineering. And in my opinion, it was built too thin. If the pool was buried entirely under the ground, maybe you wouldn't have noticed how serious this problem is. 
But here's what happened. They filled up the pool and that entire exposed wall immediately started leaking water. And we're talking like a solid line of wetness that runs from end to end and then both up and down uh, areas where ultimately it's cracked. And when there's cracks, it it pulls and leaches water into the cracks. So visually, you'll see the, cla- the cracks first because they'll be wet where the rest of the wall will remain dry. So you know what they did? You know what that builder did? They had pipe runs embedded in that wall. And there is a horizontal piece of two inch PVC pipe that runs the entire length of the wall, like basically right in the middle and running the length of the wall. This is a six inch thick wall of concrete. And now we have a, you know, two inch PVC pipe embedded into that wall, eating up all that space where structural concrete needs to be like it was already inadequate, in my opinion. And then they went and went ahead and they added this perfect, a perfect place to develop a structural crack, right? Why wouldn't the concrete crack there? It's, it's thinner there. It's weaker there than every other place on that wall because there's a piece of pipe where the concrete's supposed to be. And that's just like, that's a bone I want to pick right here. When you build a concrete pool, right? However thick the concrete is that your engineers decided or your builders decided, if you run pipe runs inside of that space, this doesn't take a rocket scientist to see we have a problem here. That was specified for structural concrete in terms of its ability to handle strength and provide reinforcement to the vessel. And you just create a a plane for a crack to develop because it's weakened in one area. PVC pipe is not strong. It should not be taking up space that structural concrete is going to be taking. And you might not be a pool builder and you're thinking like, man, who would do that? That's crazy. Even I know that if it's supposed to be eight inches thick of concrete, we need eight inches of concrete, not five and a half inches of concrete plus a two inch PVC pipe, let alone a six inch thick wall freestanding above ground with a two inch pipe running the entire length of it right in the middle of the wall. This is crazy talk to me. And I would think that most other experienced builders would be hearing this and just shaking their head. Like, obviously, this was a failure. This was a failure before the concrete even went in. You could have walked up, looked at it and said, hey, how thick is this wall going to be? Six inches finished with a two inch pipe embedded in the wall, the freestanding pool wall, six inches thick, which is really only like barely three or four inches of actual concrete and steel that that is crazy and you know what's worse we're not even done here we're just getting started so you know what else they did no waterproofing system whatsoever if the pool is buried in the ground you don't see the back side of the walls you never notice that it's leaching water right and that water could cause damage over time like there's a process that happens so there's a path of least resistance the water starts to leach along that first in movement through the, the concrete, it steals you know minerals from the concrete and cement itself, and you'll get efflorescence growth along the path that water follows. This is why you'll see efflorescence growing out of cracks in concrete. But the efflorescence actually functionally seals those leaks up eventually. And what happens is what was the path of, la- of least resistance no longer is. It's been sealed by efflorescence crystallization growth, and the water finds a new path. And it, that this process just continues and continues until the whole back side of the wall is covered in efflorescence. And what I tell two pool owners is if you build a pool in the ground and it's a res- residential pool, you'll probably never notice there's waterproofing or no waterproofing because the pool will leach water regularly, but not at such a rate that you notice water loss. Like it's not like big unexplained water loss from a large crack. It's just leaching everywhere through the entire surface and into the ground surrounding it. However, If you get a contract to build a pool on top of a hotel, right, that pool better be waterproof. Wouldn't you agree? Like 99% waterproof on the roof of a hotel. Sound good to you? Doesn't sound very good to me either. And I've seen that. I have seen that happen. Even still, in those types of environments, if you're wondering how they do it, normally you're provided with a waterproof structural box and you build your pool inside this waterproof structural box. And they'll do a hydrostatic test of this box. So basically, a giant concrete box that's filled with 
pitch, like a black tar that they just roll or mop on there, like a hot mop of a black tar, waterproofing this entire concrete vessel that then gets filled with water to determine that there is absolutely no water escaping this system because it's going to be on the roof of a hotel. And then you come in as the pool contractor, like the, the building has their in-house trades and they do a lot of structural work themselves, but they're not pool specialists. So they tend not to do the pool plumbing. They tend not to do the pool structure, but they do provide you with a waterproof structural box just as a point of interest. But my point remains, I would not build a pool on the roof of a hotel without using a solid waterproofing system. And in a concrete pool without one simply is not. So this pool I'm talking about in particular, this consulting client I had with a six inch thick wall that's freestanding with a two inch pipe that runs horizontally in at the length of the wall, there's no waterproofing in this pool. So in addition to this wall being cracked in multiple areas, basically shattered, the entire pool lacks waterproofing. So the whole thing is leaching through. And because that wall is exposed, like the backside of the pool wall is exposed, this was a foregone conclusion. If it if they didn't fill it and see this problem immediately and be like, whoa, what's going on? The entire backside of the pool wall looks like it's shattered and there's all this water everywhere. It would have ended up covered in efflorescence eventually. Like, let's say the pool wall was thicker and it wasn't structurally compromised with pipes. Even still, without a waterproofing system, long term, this was going to amount to problems for this pool owner. And we're talking so many swings and misses from this pool builder here. They didn't have an engineer involved. They didn't have the right engineering for an elevated wall pool. They didn't use a waterproofing system. The concrete was too thin. They used the structural or the pipe inside of the wall where the structural concrete should have been. It was probably more stuff that they did. Like I, I would discern this from four pictures and two paragraphs of conversation. It's a swing and a miss entirely. This pool was doomed before the concrete ever went in it. And now what's going to happen? How do you fix this? This pool's finished, right? Supposed to be swimming right now. Probably, definitely, you need an engineer now. Somebody has to come in. How strong is the compressive strength of this concrete? What is the this, this size of the steel grid that you use, like 10 millimeter rebar, for example? Was it an 8 inch on center grid? 10 inch? 12 inch or more? You know, you need to know all of this information before you can even begin looking at solutions. And that's why I was consulting with them, was telling them, look, before you spend any more money here, and when I say that, I mean in terms of repairs, because they wanted to start patching things and stuff. I'm like, stop, bring in an engineer, evaluate the project as a whole, because is this even viable? Do you have a viable solution here, which will result in a structurally sound vessel, not cracked and will hold water? And if you cannot reasonably see how you're going to arrive at that within the budget that you have, well, then now you're just throwing good money after bad. And who wants to hear brand new pool just been finished. All right, take it out. Like, but that is better than brand new pool just built. Doesn't work. Spent an extra hundred thousand dollars still doesn't work. Right. And you're thinking, would that happen? Like, <sighs> Dramatic glasses tearing off. You'd bet it happens. It happens so often. It's really unfortunate, actually. You're so invested in the dream of having a swimming pool and there's so much money on the line and so much trust involved with hiring a pool builder because you can't really vet them the same way that you can other trades and in other industries or to the same degree that you can with other trades and in other industries. And for to a certain degree, there's trust here where you just hope for the best. You get to the end of the project, it's immediately leaking. It doesn't hold water. There's cracks everywhere. And then you're starting to find out information like, this pool shell sounds like it's too thin and you need to get an engineer in here to evaluate the compressive strength, the steel grid, the thickness of the concrete, all of this stuff. Can this pool be saved? Maybe they can shoot another four inches of, of shotcrete on the inside of this pool shell, thereby building an essentially a smaller pool inside of this pool. And one of the reasons why this might be viable is interestingly, the only way in which to attach new concrete to old concrete without a discernible cold joint in between the two is through the gunite or shotcrete process. I find that to be very interesting. No bonding agent or intermediary layer or anything like that is as good as the shotcrete process being that it delivers the concrete with such velocity that it essentially embeds itself into the original surface, thereby making it even under laboratory testing conditions 
not possible to discern a cold joint between the layers. It's very interesting and very useful information for a situation like this where we have just a too thin pool shell that is already cracked and leaking like crazy. We're probably looking to add some more concrete on the inside, bring an engineer, make sure that everything's good. Because remember I mentioned this pool is built into a slope. That alone should have required an engineer. Building pools on slopes is hard to do. Risky business. So bring in the engineer, evaluate the situation, install a new steel grid, maybe four more inches of concrete on the inside. That will involve redoing every interior uh, fixture, the skimmers, the lights, the main drains, the returns. Everything's got to be like broken out and cut back and replumbed to be to the new finished interior. The pool's, of course, going to be smaller. That is a tiny price to pay if it results in you getting a viable swimming pool shell at this point because at this point there is not a lot of good options available to you people immediately start talking about oh, i'm going to sue this guy i'm going to sue that guy like i have nothing to say when you start talking about that that's entirely secondary to the fact that i'm concerned exclusively with the swimming pool what you're going to do the swimming pool to get the swimming pool working maybe the other guy who built the pool maybe he's going to do that work for free Maybe you're going to have to sue him to get the money. Maybe he never takes your calls again. Like maybe this, maybe that. I don't know. All of that is secondary to the fact that you cannot stop start pouring money into this concrete pool shell until you've had it evalu evaluated. Is there even potential to make this viable? And if there is, what's it going to look like? How many steps are going to be involved? And what's the cost going to be to that? Is there going to be any compensation from the person who botched this job originally? Maybe there's insurance involved. I don't know. But ultimately, you can pretty much count on you're going to be spending some money. And so really, the takeaway here, if you're having a concrete pool built, is there an engineer providing engineered drawings for specifications like thickness of concrete, compressive strength, the steel grid, all of that stuff? I want to see that for any concrete pool construction, whether your area requires it or not. I requires it. What else do I want to see? I want to see... Never, never any pipes running in a place that is supposed to be structural concrete. Get out of here. That's just lazy workmanship, if you ask me. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize that looks like a bad idea. It certainly is. Six inch thick concrete shells. Unless you're using 75 MPA concrete. And even if you are, I still don't think so. I think that eight inches is the thinnest concrete shell that I've ever seen an engineer proof. Now, I've heard that, you know, some areas of the USA are a little bit more lenient for their engineering standards versus uh, Canada, especially the West Coast in Canada, where I've built most of my concrete pools. We have a lot of engineering requirements and seismicking and things like that, that the average place maybe doesn't have to account for. We also have freeze and thaw, things like that. So we overbuild our structures. I, I potentially might agree with that. But again, if there's anything that you want to overbuild the crap out of, it's your pool shell. It's like the one thing you can't fix if it breaks. It's the most expensive component. It's the backbone. Like every You can change your tiles five times over, new plaster, new pumps and filters and all that. You're not replacing your pool shell. You're going to get the one and the one only, and I hope it's a good one. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.